And the stock of the day is Aurora, one that we don't talk about a lot. But it is the worst performer on the 200 today. After coming online following an extended trading pause, and that is as it made a bid for a high-end French bottle maker. And when I read this story yesterday, this is when the detail came to light, my eyes watered at the price tag $2.2 billion. So Aurora looking to raise $1.35 billion to buy the Saver Glass business. It's buying it from private equity group Carlyle. Now, the big questions are, Earnings, right? It's telling shareholders that the acquisition will be earnings per share accretive in the first full financial year of ownership. And this is another piece that I pulled from the report because, you know, I'm sure the guys will talk about it, but when you've got an Aussie company going overseas, um, execution is always a concern. Well, Aurora says that the Saver Glass management team will remain in the business. And so we've got the institutional component of the raise, I believe, Finished. There's also a retail component, and that is why the company has come back online today. And uh, that's not an intraday, but you can see that really big drop, and that is representing, uh, you know, what we're seeing on market today. Last I checked, it was down by. Let me do it again. Down by yeah, 12 percent, 12.1 percent. So, guys, apparently this French high-end manufacturer makes glass bottles for the likes of Grey Goose. I mean, I don't know how exy your taste in vodka is, but yeah, what do you make of this Aussie packing company uh, going overseas and making this massive acquisition? Andrew? Uh, yeah, no, I'm a gin and tonic man myself, so I uh, <laughs> can't help you on, on that side. I'm sorry, but uh, look, it's an interesting one, and... I have a number of amber lights, if you remember, Nadine, and one of my amber lights is companies that go offshore and buy things. Uh, so that's a bit of a concern. My next amber light is buying anything from private equity. They're not exactly known there for their benevolence or leaving money on the table. So there's sort of two immediate concerns that I have, but putting aside my miserable nature for a moment, um, which is difficult to be, I, I I don't think this seems such a bad idea. There is certainly some commonality uh, and some crossover relating to the uh, the areas they're getting involved in, because remembering Aurora is sort of packaging and consumer products and that type of thing. So there, it's not sort of, you know, they're doing something completely out of the box. And certainly management staying, I think, is a positive as well. To the point around the revenue, if I remember correctly, I don't have the slide deck in front of me, but I think the revenue in the business is about 730 million euro. So whatever that is on in Aussie dollars. So it's even though it's an eye-watering amount, there actually is a pretty strong revenue piece to your point around the um, EPS accretive nature. Not really surprising to see the share price come off today as much as it has because the offer, I think, is for $2.70 and it's a uh, an accelerated entitlement offer, non-renounceable, so you can't sell it on the market. One share at 2.55 for one for 2.55. So, yeah. in other words, not really surprising to sort of see that price weakness. Bottom line, couple of amber lights, but on balance, I wouldn't be going into the market and buying it today. You'd certainly just want things to settle down. Ideally, you'd want to sort of see maybe three to six months of integration because, again, that's one of the things as to how that all goes relating to all the efficiencies. But at a high level, it's a really well-run business. I don't think they're overpaying, but yeah, big amber lights going offshore and buying from private equity. On balance, it's a hold. And just FYI, they do make bottles for Condessa Gin. I've not tried it myself, but it looks pretty fancy as well. How do you spell that? C-O-N-D-E-S-A. I know, I know. I'll get you one for Christmas. Um, well, depending on the price, of course. Uh, Mathan. I'm holding you to that. <laughs> Mathan, um, yeah. So it's, uh, what do you think of the Aurora business as it stood before this acquisition? Do you think that this is going to be a game changer for the business and therefore, you know, it's an attractive proposition? Yeah, uh, I love a sector where the game changer happens when they done, you know, they're in a downgrade cycle. The sector is struggling. Cost of borrowing is going through the roof. Why not? Let's just borrow a truckload. Um, yeah, that kind of always spooks the market. Um, Andrew's right on uh, all the points. Private equity. When was the last time you got a good deal? Probably never. Um, and on top of that, um, you've got it. From memory, this split out of Amcor. So Amcor kept the international business, and this is supposed to be domestic business. 
So in theory, um, a lot of the shareholders didn't want the global play. Now, because of the lack of growth in the sector, they're going global. So it's kind of a, um, I guess, a reverse of, of the strategy what probably the early shareholders got into. So that, that's, again, another shock to the system. Um, it's a lot of debt to take in this kind of market. I, I don't think it's such a bad deal, but if you look at all three of the stocks in that sector, Amcor, Pact Group, uh, Aurora, they've all underperformed. These are defensives that are underperforming. Um, and this is where you've got to be careful. Um, defensives are not all defensives. Every stock is a cyclical of some sort. The defensives just have a longer cycle. And so some of these are getting hit on costs. And um, you know, Aurora is no different. I think in this sector, a lot of people were expecting divestments um, to, uh, I suppose, counter the valuation drop uh, and to boost their cash flow. And so when they start to buy something, it's tough. This is a tough decision for management to make. Short term, it's risky. Um, and as you said, track record of Aussies going overseas is abysmal. Um, and in this kind of sectors where the dynamic is weak at the moment um, and the costs are high, it's pretty tough. So I'd be a bit skeptical. I've actually started to look at Amcor a bit because it's come back. It's a global play. Um, you have to think, I guess, against the market. So, but I don't think that the downside risk is still already priced in. I think there's more cost pressures to come. So I'm not jumping into this sector and I'm not surprised Aurora is struggling. Um, you can look at Pact, you can look at uh, Amcor and you see similar trends. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think the sector is out of the woods yet. I think there's more downside risk. So I'm not jumping in, but I am keeping an eye on Amcor at this point. Okay, so are we holding Aurora? Yeah, I yeah. think I think if you're there, you know the risk and you're thinking longer term. So I don't think you're going to be too spooked. I think you okay. hold through it. All right. Uh, new money, I wouldn't be jumping into the sector. Got it. Watch Amcor. All right. Thank